I'm going to call this today's meeting to order. Uh, please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councilman Jim Godbow. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman Gallagher. Present. Councilman Herzberg. Here. Councilman Hornbuckle. Here. Councilman McDermott. Present. Councilwoman Sandy. Present. Pro Tem Murkowski. Present. Council President Hart is absent, excused. There is a quorum. A quorum is present. Thank you. Before we start um, with our special presentations this, meet this evening, um, I'd like to make an administrative note to your agenda. We will be moving consent calendar item G to t new business 1A. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this evening we're joined by Representative Coleman, who has an announcement. Well, thank you, City Council. It's always good to be here. I uh, appreciate you giving me just a minute of your time. Uh, State Representative Kevin Coleman, I'm just here to uh, invite all of you to our monthly coffee hour. We're going to have this the second Monday of every month, along with Wayne County Commissioner Glenn Anderson. It's at Homestead Kitchen on Wayne Road, which is right near uh, Carlos Mexican Restaurant, kind of by the old art van right on North Wayne Road between Warren and Joy Road over there. Uh, we do that the second Monday of the month. It's October 9th, so uh, this coming Monday when you see this on TV. Uh, 9 a.m. at Homestead Kitchen. And then I, I saw that uh, there was 5.5 million coming in federal grants for our fire department uh, to help with staffing. Uh, combining that with the 7 million that my office secured for the fire department this year, that's over 12 million for our firefighters. That's uh, excellent news. Just want to say congratulations to the city on that. Uh, our fire, fire department, we absolutely have to support them. I know they were short on staffing, and this is going to be a great boost for them and I was very proud to help secure the bulk of that funding. And uh, I just want to say, you know, in my opinion, uh, hopefully the police department's next. We certainly got to support public safety. And then uh, over the weekend, I was able to go to the very last mass at St. Simon and Jude Church. Uh, that's been part of our community for 64 years now. And so it was a sad day uh, to say goodbye, uh, to see one of our bigger parishes close. So I was, uh, there to support, but uh, also to, to give hope to the people that, that are sad and going to have to find a new church. So uh, we're looking at other uh, parishes in the area to help them find new churches. And then I just want to give out my office phone number, 517-373-2275. Uh, my email, kevincoleman at house.mi.gov. And then, of course, I always give out my cell phone number. Give me a call anytime, 734-751-6321. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. At this time, we're going to move to comments from the public on agenda items. Um, this section allows for a person to be recognized only at the beginning of the meeting to address the council pertaining to items that are specifically on our business agenda. Um, everyone speaking before the council should do so in a civil manner. Speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, vulgar language, disruptive out outbursts, threats, racial slurs, or other con conduct that interferes with the business meeting, personal attacks on council members, the administration, city staff, or other speakers or members of the public will not be tolerated. The clock will start upon the first words of the speaker and will not stop while the speaker is recognized from the floor. It is the speaker's option to ask questions at this time, and the person questioned may choose to respond during the speaker's allotment of time. However, the clock will not be stopped once it is started. The clock will continue to run until the speaker is completed or their speaking time is exhausted, whichever is first. Thank you for letting me read that very long paragraph. All right, we'll start with those on my right. Anyone? Uh, we'll start with uh, behind you, Ray. 
<laughs> well, I'll, well, I'll get a turn. Good evening, Emily Bauman, uh, resident and actually a city council candidate. Um, I, my questions are on a uh, couple, couple of them. So consent items um, C. I was curious why um, it, it mentioned the copy of the RFP. I saw that it was opened on September 21st. And I realized that it's, the RFPs are put into the newspaper for people to see. But as someone who wouldn't be bidding on this, I guess I'm curious why the RFP would not have been in the documentation for the residents to see. And it just felt like it was an inconsistent with other things that I've seen when the evaluations made as far as who's going to get the bid, there's been some other things that have this evaluation. So my question is why is, does this seem inconsistent? Why couldn't we have the RFP so we can see what are they actually bidding on? That's a very large amount and even made reference to the fact that it's such a large project that there's a 10% increase over the bid amount to cover kind of the, you know, the possibility of something. So I, I guess I want, you know, it just opened on September 21st. So to have it on the consent calendar seems really fast also. Um, so just that's a question on that one. On D, um, when are comparisons made in renewal process for anything that's going on in the administration? When you have something, I, I see the value of maintaining one uh, contractor for the same thing for certain things, but when do they go out for like, okay, let's evaluate this. I think there's a little bit of question like when, you know, I know the, the, it went up a little bit and all this kind of stuff, but when do we look and see if there may be someone else that provides better service even? Um, and then on E, I noticed that that was also provided on the, 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 the bid or the dollar amount for the vehicles was put through on September 25th. And I'm in the budget, it said that there would be about 980,000 for vehicles for the Department of Public Services. However, I may, I may get that, the name of the term wrong, but, um, but for that it was 980,000. It looks like with this particular purchases, we're actually over a million dollars, and I think like 80,000 over that 980,000. So my question is, just because it's put through the budget, where's the evaluation to determine, okay, yes, these vehicles need to be repaired, you know, where's that information and that, ev and that evaluation done so that we can see that yes, because we're told that when you put something through the budget, there's a secondary review before we actually spend the money. And then the last question I have is actually on new business, uh, what is it? Um, oh, the last one. Um, for the nominations, I was just curious what the process is for nominating, and maybe you'll, you'll explain that a little bit later, but, and who, who are the nominees? Because there were no names on this, so it's no, like, who are the nominees for that, um, that delegation, and how is that process? So those are my questions, thanks. Okay, thank you. All right. Is there anyone on my left speaking on the agenda? No? Coming back to the right. Hello, Edward Pruitt here. I'm thankful to be in front of you all today. Um, I will be speaking specifically on agenda item C and agenda item E. Uh, as you all know, we, uh, every city council, I put out a questionnaire to the community and it's to intentionally uh, reach out to community members so that they can be involved in this governmental process. Uh, we had nine respondents, so that's so amazing that nine more people want to be involved in the workings of the government. Um, in these, I'm specifically going to be speaking to these two because these had the most comments. Um, C for the bidding for the roof, the results were 44.4% yes, 33.3% no, 22.2 needs more uh, information. E, the approval of three Chevy Silverados, 77.8% uh, said no, 11.1% said yes, 11.1% .1 said needs more improvement. When we look at the comments that were made, One community member said, why do we need more expensive trucks when we have good equipment already? Just ordered new Ford trucks. Why not stay with Ford? Stop switching multiple brands. Another, why is the court financing a balance within, with the city uh, yet to be determined interest rate? The, uh, and then a question, the court is tapped out for 200K. And then until we have the financing in order, this vote should be delayed. There is not enough information pro provided to justify more truck purchases. 
So in regards to those, my personal comments, uh, first thing, if anyone wants to see the full results, uh, they can go to my page, Edward Pruitt III for Westland City Council. Um, but in regards to this specifically, uh, we have an amount to be financed, and in that financing, it has yet to be determined who's going to finance it, what the percentage rate is, so on and so forth. I think that it's best to delay it until we find out all of the information so that you can make a sound decision. Um, as far as E goes, um, we've had over a million dollars that over three council sessions that's been approved. I know it's in the budget, so on and so forth, but you have a second way of checking it. Um, and I don't believe the questions have been asked to know, especially to the public, what vehicles are having an issue, how can we resolve it, how will it play a part over the long run. And lastly, item G, um, I fully support it, but I'm concerned that the public wasn't made aware of it to have enough time to view it. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I will ask, no one on my left, Ray. <laughs> I know that was mentioned about, uh, gee, well, let's talk about it. I think the resolution was in the new business, right, or something? Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. The reason why it's to me is important, because years ago, it wasn't like it is today, better supports. They have step out there doing great things. People are working at thrift stores. People are, are working in the community. People, I work at the Community Living Services, and I'm very proud of what I'm working for, and I represent as a peer mentor going on. This is my anniversary, 11 years, and I'm ready to go to another year. I love what I do. So I just want, hopefully, that you know, we man this thing, because it's important. We need to have this. That means everyone. That means people with disabilities have the right to work, have the right to be treated with dignity and respect, inclusion. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Is there any other comments on tonight's agenda? Any other comments on tonight's agenda? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to our consent calendar. Is there a motion for the consent calendar? I have a motion from Councilman Herzberg. Is there a second? Support. Okay, I have support from Delano, uh, Councilman Delano Hornbuckle. Okay. Are there any changes to the consent calendar? Any changes to the consent calendar? Okay, seeing no changes. Do we have to roll? Any dissent. Any dissent. <laughs> any dissent. Okay, seeing no dissent. Unanimous. Unanimously carried. Council has approved the following consent calendar items. Minutes of the study session held September 16, 2023. Minutes of the regular meeting held September 18, 2023. Approval of bid for professional services related to the complete restoration of the existing roofing system at the 18th District Court to the low bidder, Lutz Roofing, in an amount not to exceed $548,000. The mayor and city clerk are authorized to sign the contract approved by the city attorney and executed by the vendor. Approval of annual Zix Protects Essential email filtering software subscription through CDWG in the amount of $5,900. Approval of purchase of three 2024 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 pickup trucks for the Department of Public Service, amount $51,035.85 per vehicle. Last item approved on the consent calendar today, adoption of prepared land division resolution 6225 Arthur, West side of Arthur between Yale and Hunter. This was planning department number 2260 and the land division was approved by City Council August 21, 2023. Moving to payment of vouchers. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. I have a motion by Councilwoman Sampi and support by Councilmember <coughs> McDermott. Is there a 
Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any dissent? Any dissent? Seeing no dissent? Dissent? Unanimously here. Moving to new business. Item one, nomination of delegate to the annual Michigan Municipal League Convention to be held October 18th through October 20, 2023 at the Grand Traverse Resort in Traverse City. Okay. Are there any nominations? Yes, I have one. Okay, Councilman McDermott. Thank you, Council President Pro Tem, or tonight, Council President. Uh, I'd like to nominate um, our colleague who's currently um, been our representative in MML, Councilman Jim Godbout. Okay, so we have a nomination for Council Member <coughs> Godbout. Any other nominations? Yeah, I would like to nominate um, Kylie um, Melissa Snappy. Okay, so we have a nomination for Council Member Sampey. There's a motion to close nominations. Is there support? Support. Okay. So I have a motion to close nominations from Council Member Herzberg and support from Councilwoman Sampy. I just, that just passes, right? Ask for dissent. I have to ask for dissent. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't run nominations usually. Is there any dissent? Is there any dissent? Seeing no dissent, nominations are closed. Designation of delegate to the annual Michigan Municipal League Convention. We did have two names, uh, two individuals from council that were nominated. Councilman James Godbout and Councilwoman Melissa Sampy. And according to our rules, the names will be identified on a slip of paper, placed in a beautiful box, shaken up, withdrawn one at a time, and voted in that order. Anybody not aware of that or not understand that? No, I'm ready. All right. So I'm going to write two names. This is very high tech. <laughs> I have two names, Jim Godbelt, Melissa Sampy, individual three by five sheets of paper. I'm gonna to toss them into this beautiful box my wife does not know that I have. Isn't it pretty? It is pretty. You're and I be will, in trouble. I will draw them out one at a time. Okay. Maybe. I think. Wow, they must be sticking to the bottom and I don't wanna look at them. Maybe we should have our city attorney help us. First name, okay. Melissa Sampy. Melissa Sampy. And because we are going in order, obviously the second name is Jim Godbell. Okay. okay. So, Madam President, at this point you would want to conduct a vote in order of the two okay. and so the first vote in, in the positive would be to confirm Ms. Mel or, or not Melissa Sampy. Okay. So at this time, we'll have the um, votes. You'll cast as per the clerk said in the affirmative for support and the negative for no support for Melissa Sampy. And clerk, can we please have roll call? Councilman Godbaum. No. Councilman Herzberg. No. For Melissa. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Hornbuckle. Yes. Councilman McDermott. No. Uh, Councilwoman Sampy. Yes. Pro Tem Markowski. Yes. It's 3-3. Three, three. Seeing that there, there was not sufficient votes, we will go to the next name on the list. Okay. This roll call okay. will be for? Councilmember Godbow. Councilman Godbow. Give me just one second, please. All right, again, this one is for Councilwoman Melissa Sampy. Councilman Godbout. This is for Godbout. No, this is for Godbout. <laughs> I got my slips. And you even have it in your hand. I do, mm -hmm. I do. 
This is for positive or not for Councilman Jim Godbow. Councilman Godbow. Yes. Councilman Herzberg. Yes. Councilman Hornbuckle. No. Councilman McDermott. Yes. Councilwoman Sampy. No. Pro Tem Rakowski. No. Well, well, well. The way that your rules read, unless I am mistaken and the city attorney can back me up, this goes to the next meeting. Okay. Is that correct? I don't think it's in the council policies and procedures, but that's the historically how it's been handled that it would be tabled until next meeting. I think there really needs to be a point of um, consideration made that the date is you know, fast approaching and that if we delay this vote, um, we won't be able to um, send our delegate to information to MML in a timely fashion um, or secure you know, the appropriate travel accommodations for, that in, for either individual. So. I would like to suspend our policies and revote. Do I need to ask for a motion for, for that support? If you're going to suspend rules, I say yes. Okay. Is anybody willing to entertain a motion to suspend rules? Or? I move that we suspend the rules and vote on this again. Okay. I'd like to have discussion as well. Okay. And we need support. I support that. Okay. So I have a motion from Peter, uh, Councilman Herzberg, support from Council Member Hornbuckle. And I believe that needs roll call. My understanding is that the motion, Councilman, is to suspend the rules to vote again. I thought that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Yes, certainly a roll call would be advisable. All right. Councilman Godbow, to suspend the rules to vote again. Yes. Councilman Herzberg. Yes. Councilman Hornbuckle. Yes. Councilman McDermott. Yes. Councilwoman Sampy. Yes. Pro Tem Murkowski. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. I just happen to have two <laughs> sheets of paper here <laughs> already made out. Any objection to me throwing these two names back in the hat? You're so, in charge. Thank you. Um, Council Member Herzberg, he wanted to have discussion. So as the maker of the motion, you have the privilege of the floor first. Uh, I do have discussion, but I believe Councilman got off and his light Okay. All of the lights okay. are on. I'm sorry. Well, this is kind of a silly thing to be uh, taking up time in our meeting. Um, Anybody here can correct me if I'm wrong, but any council member can go to that MML convention and have the cost reimbursed. The only difference for the delegate is that they're voting on items that the MML overall are going to uh, be proactive on in the next year, uh, to which Councilman Godbout has been the voting delegate on that for several years. Um, so only one council member asked me for their vote. So, I mean, I'm willing to hear... If you want to go or what we're going to do, maybe we should have some discussion, uh, sorry, some discussion and make a decision. I don't want to see this go to a third or fourth vote. It seemed like the three to three split's pretty solid. So maybe we want, we want to have some discussion on it. Okay. Why is this? I'm going to clear them all. Okay. From the supporter, do you have discussion? Yeah, um, kind of echo the same thing. Only one person came to ask me uh, to, to be a part of this, to be uh, nominated. Um, but I also feel that um, we should spread the love and allow someone else to have that opportunity uh, to experience that as well. So, um, on, like I said, only one person came to me and, and asked for a nomination and, and uh, gave me some feedback on why, and I agree that um, someone else should also be experienced. Unfortunately, I'm not able to go, so I didn't ask for a nomination to go. Okay, is there other discussion? Okay, 
right, seeing no further discussion, we'll move on to the voting process. I'm gonna shake your box. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we're First name say, drawn is Mr. Godbout. Okay. Second name drawn is Councilman Sampy. So we'll conduct ourselves as we did before in the affirmative for support and the negative for lack thereof. And the clerk will be so gracious as to roll call the vote. For Councilman Godbout. Councilman Godbout. Yes. Councilman Herzberg. Yes. Councilman Hornbuckle. No. Councilman McDermott. Yes. Councilwoman Sampy. No. Pro Tem Markowski. No. Motion does not pass. Rather, that nomination is not accepted. Let me go to the next name on the list, which is Councilwoman Sampy. Okay. The voting will be the same. Affirmative for support, negative for lack thereof. The clerk will conduct roll call. Councilman Godbaum. No. Councilman Herzberg. No. Councilman Hornbuckle. Yes. Councilman McDermott. No. Councilwoman Sampy. Yes. Pro Tem Markowski. Yes. This too does not pass. I have one question. Like we had, we had a moment to. Excuse, to can you ask? I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Can I? Can I? Yes. We're gonna have a. Do you, what are? What is your request? I just want to make a comment uh, to the people that we nominated. I don't think that would be in order. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, so you saying yes? Go ahead. No, I or think no? that would be out of order. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're clearly in a deadlock. Are we going to spend the next hour voting the same way? Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to hear from either one of us? Or? Sure. Let's enter. Sure. Let's entertain that. Perhaps that'll change some people's feelings. Okay. So, do you want to? Um, Mr. Clerk, if you would, can you put the names in the box so that we can hear from, you'll select a name and then they can speak as to why they should be attending. Oh, okay. You mean we're gonna do this, what, whichever order these come out? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, okay. that way I don't have to determine that. <laughs> okay. I could just have flipped a coin if I had a coin. Okay. First name drawn is Councilmember Godbout. Godbout. Council, Councilmember Godbout, your mic is. Second name, Melissa Sam. Sure. Thanks. Um, for those that aren't aware of what the MML conference is, this is the annual convention for the Michigan Municipal League, uh, which they vote on the, the core principles of the, the league and what legislative actions they're going to take place. I have been the, uh, the delegate for the city for probably close to 20 years going to the Michigan Municipal League Convention. And I believe outside of Councilman Herzberg is the, are the, I'm the only council member that's ever been to currently sitting. Uh, to the Michigan Municipal League Convention. Uh, as such, you know, this wouldn't have even been on the agenda had I not sent an email when I noticed when the first agenda came out uh, that this was not on there. Normally, this is on the meeting in September so that the information can get to the league in time so that we have a voting delegate. So, due to the fact that 
uh, a, I've, and normally in the past, the, uh, if a new, another council member wanted to go, it would have been as the alternate. And as was stated, any council member can go to the convention. I already have my reservations for the convention. I've gone to the convention for 20, 20 years. So uh, I will be attending the convention whether or not I get the, the nomination for this or, or not. Uh, but uh, it's uh, you know ironic that uh, we didn't even know that it had to be on the agenda and now there's uh, some uh, contention as to who should be the delegate for the city. I've represented this city uh, to the best of my abilities at the Michigan Municipal League. I sit on several committees at the Michigan Municipal League and am involved on a monthly basis in meetings at the Michigan Municipal League. So I'm, I'm fairly well versed in what takes pace, place and what transpires. Ironically as well, uh, and it was even uh, as I, I noted in my email, the vote also cast the vote for the uh, projects that Westland has a, uh, a project sitting there uh, that's to be voted on at the convention for the uh, project of the year. Again, this wasn't even gonna be on our agenda. We wouldn't have had a vote or we wouldn't have had a delegate to vote on our own project at the Mich Michigan Municipal League had I not brought this forward. So I'm asking for support uh, so that we can move this forward. Thank you, Council Member Godbout. Councilwoman Stampy, would you like to speak? Sure, thank you. And I, I don't have any problems with Mr. Godbout going. It has nothing to do with that. I am really looking forward to going as well. Um, I already had plans to go. I'm a speed networker and someone that is able to really rally up support for our project as well as, as mentioned. So Wesleyan does have a project in the, in the race right now for the project of the year. So I'm looking forward to going there, connecting with my colleagues from other municipalities and, and just having a new voice and a new face at MML. It has nothing to do with Mr. Godbout not being a good representation at all. It's just the excitement of, you know, I know Mr. Godbout won't be around forever, you know, just like myself. So it's just kind of getting, no, it's, it has nothing to do with that. It, it's just saying getting new. Okay. Let's I, I'm sorry, order, sir. Thank you. It has everything to do with just getting new blood in, excitement for the city, and getting new blood involved in MMO. So that's my, I guess, pitch per se. It's just getting new blood involved in being involved in MML. And again, I am interested in going and, and being excited. So. Thank you, Councilwoman. Okay. At this time, in our suspended rules of nomination, um, first I would like to inquire if the council has the desire to open nominations. Are you asking us to nominate someone else? I'm just asking if you have the desire to open nominations if there's, if, for additional candidates. Here, my mic's on. Do you have? It's showing on. I don't know. Okay. All right. So I see no um, desire for any additional nominations. Um, I say we vote one more time. If we can't make a vote happen, um, wow. Then we won't. Yeah, we won't have a delegate. Um, <clears throat> you know, hmm, okay, sorry, I'm just having a, a moment of, of frustration, I'm sure you guys can understand that, um, all right, so, yeah. 
While you're thinking about that, may I offer something? I would love it. I was thinking that perhaps it we should not have to do with this bring issue. the um, consent calendar item that was moved to new business forward. So, so yes. So normally, when we move an item from the consent calendar, it's one A or one A, one B, etc. Normally, when we do nominations, there are nominations and then a vote. But today, in between the nomination and the vote, should have been. Item 1A right. kind of got lost in the shuffle because the And I think we're going to continue to be lost in that shuffle if we don't bring... So um, at some point, whether it's after the council chooses to vote again for a delegate mm -hmm. or between now and then, 1A needs to be addressed formally by the council. So is there any desire by the council to table the vote until after agenda item 1A is brought forward so that the, that agenda item can move forward? You mean postpone, right? Postpone. I'm sorry. Postpone until item 1A. So moved. Thank you, council member Godbout. Is there support? Support. Okay. So I have support from... Councilwoman Sampi, is there any? Give me one second. <laughs> so the motion would be to temporarily postpone the selection of delegate until after item two, one A rather is considered. Yes. Right. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any dissent? Is there any dissent? Does that need sing? Nope, no, good. we're going to roll call it. Our, no, 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 no. No, we're good? No, okay. We're good. Any dissent? <laughs> no. Motion passes okay. unanimously. All right. I appreciate the um, cooperation okay. of the council. So at this time... We're moving to item 1A on the agenda. Adoption of prepared resolution recognizing and commemorating October 2023 as the 78th anniversary of National Disability Employment Awareness Month in the city of Westland. Is there a motion? Summit. There's a motion by Councilwoman Sampi. Is there support? Support. There is support from Council Member McDermott. Uh, joining us this evening is uh, a representative from STEP. I would love to have the petitioner um, and approach the podium and give us a little background as to what this resolution entails. Good evening, everybody. My name is Brent McCallsky. I'm president and CEO of Services to Enhance Potential. STEP is our acronym, and I just wanted to um, uh, state my appreciation for the council of taking the steps uh, tonight to uh, proclaim October as National Disability Employment Awareness Month. As you may know, STEP works very hard with about 1,500 folks every year in a variety of, of ways to improve individuals' lives, and one of those being workforce development and employment. So for us to be able to rec be recognized uh, during this month and everybody's hard work, not only the job seekers, but all the staff around the state to be able to, to recognize um, and do that, all that hard work is is nice to be able to, to be able to stand in front of you tonight. So uh, as, as Ray so eloquently said earlier today, this, this does mean significant movement. Uh, years ago, we would not be able to have this conversation where employers are talking more frequently about employing individuals with disabilities and other challenges. So these type of proclamations, these type of efforts really mean a lot for not only the disabled population, but also the communities which everybody lives in. So thank you again, and uh, I'll, uh, uh, I'll see you again probably shortly. All right, okay. Thank you. Okay, and do we have anything from the maker? Thank you so much. Um, you're doing a great job, too. Oh, thanks. So thank you, Brent, for, for covering that, too. I actually brought that uh, forward because I really feel very passionate about those that um, have disabilities. As those may know, I do have a brother with low-functioning autism, and I see the challenges that he has every day 
Um, and, and he does Meals on Wheels and he does it for free and you will never find a more warm and compassionate person at your door giving you a hug, giving you your meals. So by bringing this forward, it was not only near and dear to my heart, but I really felt that Wesleyan could benefit from taking those in the community and just recognizing them every day for what they do. So, so thank you, Brent, for reminding us. Um, and I appreciate the colleagues' support for, um, for this as well. So thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, is there any comment from the supporter? Yes, thank you, uh, Council President Pro Tem, and thank you for stepping into the chair tonight in a, I guess, somewhat contentious meeting. I appreciate that. Um, I just want to thank my colleague for bringing this forward. Um, you know, disability awareness is something that this community takes very seriously. I know Ray is always advocating for it. Um, it affects my family as well. Uh, my mom's brother suffers from a, he's differently abled with a, a mental disability. So I want to thank my colleague for bringing this up and getting it on the agenda tonight. And uh, for everybody out there in the community who um, has a disability who just functions as a, and wants to be treated as just a normal person out there getting a job and making a contribution. We hear you, we see you. It's a step who is a, an ally for people in the community, for folks at the ARC um, who help out in that work, for the folks at NAMI at, um, and, and do the NAMI walks every year here in Michigan. Thank you for what you do, for just bringing people into the community and all the great work that you do to make sure that everybody's treated as equal and equitably and has uh, respect and can achieve what they want out of their own life. Thank you. Okay. All right. Is there any other discussion from the council? Any other discussion? All right, any dissent? Any dissent? Seeing no dissent, it's unanimously passed. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Step, for the wonderful work that you do. Uh, we're going to move into our third round of voting <laughs> for our designations here. Mr. Clerk, if you would be so kind. I have in my hand two brand new, recently filled out <laughs> magic <laughs> ballot forms, if you will. One says Councilwoman Sampy, the other says Councilman Godbout. They are in the box. I'll give them their blue shaking. Better not hurt Cheryl's box, I tell you. Councilman Godbout is first. Okay. Councilwoman Sampy is second. Imagine that. All right. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, we are going to do our third and hopefully final vote for the delegate designation. Please vote in a favor in an affirmative manner, a lack of support in a negative, and we will have the clerk run. Call. For Councilman Godbout. Councilman Godbout. Yes. Councilman Herzberg. Yes. Councilman Hornbuckle. No. Councilman McDermott. Yes. Councilwoman Sampy. No. Pro Tem Rakowski. All right. For the for the sake of moving on with this evening, I'm going to um, support Councilman Godbout. Councilman Godbout is the delegate. There is not a need to advance the vote to the next person. Congratulations, Mr. Conbell. Moving to new business, item three, okay. nomination no. <laughs> of alternate in, in case of the inability of the delegate to attend to the annual MML convention to be held October 18th through 20, 2023 at the Grand Traverse Resort in Traverse City. Nominations. Oh, all right. And I'd like to nominate <laughs> Councilwoman Sampy. Okay, we have a nomination for Councilwoman Sampy. Are there other nominations? I don't know. This isn't showing, so if you can do one of these for me, that's helpful. Motion to close nominations. Okay, we have a motion to close nominations. Is there support? Support. We have support from, uh, what's it called, Council President, <laughs> from Councilman Godbout. Uh, is there any dissent? 
Or do we have to do a roll call? We don't have to do roll call, do we? No. We, we all know who we are by this point. Okay. <laughs> Any dissent for closing nominations? Any dissent? Seeing no dissent, nominations are closed. Moving to new business item four, designation of alternate to attend the MML convention October 18th through 20th at the Grand Traverse Resort. One person has been nominated, Councilwoman Sampy. There should be a motion to affirm by acclamation okay. her designation. Is there a motion? Yeah, motion. Okay, <laughs> motion. <laughs> All right, we have a motion to accept the designation of Councilwoman Sampy by acclamation. Uh, from Council Member Delano Hornbuckle, and do we have support? Support. We have support from Council Member Michael McDermott. Okay. Roll call is not necessary. Not necessary. Okay. Thank you. Is there any dissent? Dissent. Okay. We have dissent from Peter Herzberg. So, with dissent being made. Roll call. Roll call. Councilman Gabdal. Yes. Councilman Herzberg. No. Councilman Hornbuckle. Yes. Councilman McDermott? Yes. Councilwoman Sampy? Yes. Pro Tem Rakowski? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, I appreciate your um, patience and I wish you both a wonderful experience at MML. Okay. <sighs> Sorry. We are moving on to public comment. Who wants to hear the paragraph again? All right. <laughs> Everyone speaking before the council should do so in a civil manner. Speaker shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, vulgar language, disruptive outbursts, threats, racial slurs, or other conduct that interferes with the business meeting. Personal attacks on council members, the administration, city staff, or other speakers or members of the public will not be tolerated. The clock will start upon the first words of the speaker and will not stop while the speaker is recognized from the floor. It is the speaker's option to ask questions at this time, and the person questioned may choose to respond during the speaker's allotment of time. However, the clock will not be stopped once it is started. The clock will continue to run until the speaker is completed or their time is exhausted, whichever is first. I'm going to start on my left. <laughs> Mr. Barra. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Greetings, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, it's that time of year again. I probably could have done this during uh, announcements and presentations, but I wouldn't have missed this enjoyable council <laughs> meeting for anything. Uh, today I'm here to talk to you about the Wayne Westland Veteran Meal Program. This year is our 10th annual event. Uh, give people a little bit of history. Ten years ago, State Representative Bob Kozowski and I hatched a plan to give away turkeys and we had 30 veterans sign up and they came and we literally delivered turkeys from the trunks of our car outside the Wayne Ford Civic League property. And of course the next year it went to 60 turkeys and from then it turned into full meal packages that got involved with sponsors and donations, more community involvement. And I'm proud to say that as of last year we gave away 392 family meals for veteran families, surviving spouses, and other people, uh, active duty service member families, which was, you know, we kept growing and growing. We thought about the families at home, their husband or wives are overseas serving our country, they're on limited resources, so we wanted to include them too in our program. So Wayne and Westland, veterans, surviving spouses, or active duty families are recipients of this program. Uh, the meal will feed between six to eight people, giving our veterans an opportunity to gather their families and bring them in. Uh, you can register online at thecityofwestland.com veteran meal program. Uh, there's a link on the front page uh, Mr. Brown has put out there where you can register online. There's also a link for Square Donation Site. We do solicit donations for this program. Last year it was $19,800 for those 392 meals. This year, with the price increases, we're expecting about 23,000, perhaps even $24,000 needed to be raised to do this. So I'm asking from my heart, please reach out, give whatever you can, 
The links are on there. You can donate. Veterans or families that want to receive a meal package can come to the greeter station here at City Hall and pick up this form, which is right out on the counter. Take it home, fill it out, or fill it out here and turn it in. It will go to the mayor's office, and the ladies in the mayor's office will process them into the computer because we're using a common database to, to keep all this information straight. So it's a great program, brings families together. It's important. Again, this is our 10th year, so I encourage everybody to donate. Thank you, Councilman McDermott, for your donation. I saw that pop up in the computer yesterday. Much appreciated, sir. And the rest of you, give it some thought. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone on my right? Oh, rock, paper, scissors back there? OK. <laughs> Ray, we like when you close the show with your positive messages, right? I can't decide. We, there's no decisions tonight. Uh, right. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Emily Bauman. Um, I'm, as I mentioned earlier, I am a candidate for city council. And I guess um, the first thing I wanted to say is that I, I'm, thank you for, um, I'm glad you guys were able to pass the prepared resolution. I do agree that it, um, it did happen fast. It, it was missed on, for those who saw the agenda on Friday. So I think there is some concern that, you know, just from a resident being able to see things on the agenda and know that they're coming up before the surprises. So it was good you moved off to new business. I also have, um, you know, between um, mental disability and others and um, some physical in my family, um, it is very concerned, you know, it is good to always be aware of that. So I thank you for passing that. Um, I do have, I'm curious because I asked questions in the beginning and they weren't addressed and instead the votes were moved to move consent, the consent items over without even acknowledging or addressing the questions that were posed. Um, so I guess I'm a little concerned about that, that why they wouldn't even be addressed as a question in the process because there was an opportunity to, to have given those answers. So I do want to, um, I am concerned with that. And then I do want to just mention that uh, as all the candidates for city council were on, uh, the League of Women Voters video is out. So if anyone wants to see the uh, candidate, candidate responses to the League of Women Voters questions, that is out there. It came out, I think, yesterday or something like that. So I'm sure it's on a number of Facebook pages as well as the League of Women Voters website directly. So for anyone who's looking forward to voting and knowing a little bit more about the candidates, that's, um, I know it's a great video and um, I've heard some good things about it. So. That's pretty much it, thanks. Thank you. All right. Miss Ruby. Good evening, everyone. Ruby Richards, uh, uh, Westland resident. I'm here with an announcement. The NAACP Western Wayne County is having their 26th Freedom Fund dinner next Sunday, October the 15th, 2023, at the Soho Banquet and Event Center at 34615 Warren. The reception starts at 4 p.m. Our keynote speaker is Derek Johnson. He's the president and CEO of NAACP. And you can go online and purchase tickets at www.westernwaynecountynaacp.com. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone over it? Oh, hang on, Ray. Okay. We, we're going to leave you to be our, our show closer, I think, because we're all going to need that positive, that positive proclamation you give us every week. Please don't let me all right. follow Ray. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Greetings. My name is Annetta Joyce. I serve as the constituent services manager with Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. So, greetings and thank you all so much for your service and partnership. Um, just wanted to bring some some updates. So, crisis averted for 45 days. Um, we have uh, passed a last Friday, late last Friday. There was a continuing resolution passed until mid-November to continue and to avoid a government shutdown. On our website, tlaib.house.gov, there is a full FAQ page to just give you some brief guidance of what happens in the case of a shutdown and what federal agencies will be affected, what services will be affected. So please visit our website. Also, last week, just to recap, we were able to do, um, we were able to, Congresswoman Tlaib was able to vote yes on two powerful bills. bills. Um, firstly, it was the Native American Child Protection Act, as well as the Veterans Benefits Improvement Act of 2023. Uh, 
Uh, so Congresswoman Tlaib was able to reintroduce the re excuse me, Restaurant Workers Bill of Rights in order to improve the lives of restaurant workers nationwide. Um, we were also able to co-sponsor the Community Railway, let me get the name right, I'm so sorry. <laughs> The Rail Worker and Community Safety Act, um, where we ensure um, some of that hazardous waste, um, uh, hazardous waste that's transported through our neighborhoods every day is now regulated. Um, and also excited to announce that Congresswoman has um, was appointed to serve on the House Oversight and Accountability Committee again. So congratulations to the Congresswoman, um, as well as she will continue to serve on the House Financial Services Committee. So also just want to bring um, greetings and again remind you all of our neighborhood service centers. Right now we have three service centers that serves as our district offices. Our main flagship office is over in College Park on Outer Drive in Southfield. Um, we are open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Um, I'll also leave some information out in the lobby, but also want to give um, give our phone number in case we need, in case any residents may need any assistance. That's 313-463-6220. Again, 313-463-6220. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. That was very fast phone number. So it was 313-463-6220. Okay. I don't think we have uh, closed captioning, so I wanted the folks at home to be able to get it. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Anyone on the left? No one on the left. Okay. Anyone you want to go before Ray or after Ray? <laughs> Ray's gonna go. Ray's gonna wrap up the show, right? Go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to say. Uh, my name's Tina. I go by Christina Brockovich. For those who don't know me. Um, Thursday, September 21st, I got a private call from a Westland police officer who stated he wanted to remain anonymous. Um, he went in to tell me that Jed, uh, Jeff, former Chief Jed Rusick, deleted files of Officer Compton. Um, they obtained, I guess the files um, showed he had racial slurs um, for somebody he ar arrested. Jed Rusick deleted it because he didn't want William Marshall's family or anyone else to see it during that lawsuit. I wanted to make you aware. Also, um, that story is going to be breaking. That video footage I've, I've released to the media. Um, I'm, as you guys know, I'm helping Officer Buckley uh, clear his name. Um, that officer, he deserves justice. He was wrongfully terminated from his job. The police dash cam video clearly shows that both Compton and Gomez were fully aware that William Marshall ingested the cocaine. None of them decided to tell anybody. Um, Ron Buckley, Sergeant Buckley, former S Sergeant Buckley, um, was not even aware <clears throat> that William Marshall ingested the crack cocaine. Uh, no one even told him. In fact, he wasn't even responsible for anybody in the jail. It was actually... Um, Lieutenant Blanchard, I believe at the time. He wasn't even charged. Compton and Gomez weren't charged, but I'm expecting um, Worthy to charge uh, Compton and Gomez. So just so you know. Thank you. Anyone on the left? <laughs> Ray, I think it's your turn. First of all, I want to thank the council for the support for the Awareness Month for the employment. We need to have this conversation, and it's finally getting this conversation rolling, and it's very good, because I ain't going to stop. I'm going to keep going at it out there, because it's important. It's not this here. I'm going to hit Livonia. I'm going to hit Dearborn yet. Uh, talk about my disability, act to see things. So it's, it's, it needs to be done, and people should be getting chances, even at the polls, if they want to work at a poll. You know what? I put an application and hopefully uh, I can help out. That's one of them let everybody know. 
I'm going to try it. It's experience, but hey, I can probably do something there. So that's what I'm going to do, coffee hour. I'm planning on going to that at 9 o'clock, uh, here Kevin and, and them, and I have a couple of questions for them anyway uh, that I want to talk about some issues, nothing about here, but this, the, you know, uh, Medicaid or the freedom to work, I want to talk about that because it's important to me too. And when people are working, there's like people age out, and when they age out, that's not fair to them. They should not be penalized. So I want to bring that up too. So anyway, I am going to the mayor's state of the speech on Wednesday. And I want to hear all the good stuff that's going on here in Westland, some positive stuff. And also I trained six peer mentors uh, two weeks ago that went good. So peers around Michigan, we are, they're growing. We are going places. And I, I'm real happy about that. And I'm going to tell everybody, I ain't going nowhere. I love what I do. So I'm out in the city. I've had people talk to me and said, you know, I see you on TV. You're always positive. Keep up the good work what you're doing. So as me as the chair of the Disability Advocacy Group, I'm going to keep moving the group forward. We don't sit around. We're out there. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Is there any other individual who'd like to make a comment this evening? Anybody else? Okay, seeing no more public comments, we're going to move on to comments from your mayor. Good evening, Council President Pro Temp. Great job tonight. Ray, thank you for the positive comments. Uh, it's big to be positive and uh, stay on the positive side of things, so I appreciate that. Um, looking forward to my State of the City address. It'll be this Wednesday, October 4th, 2023. We're almost sold out. We got over 300 RSVPs, so there's a lot of excitement for this event. Um, if you have an RSVP, please RSVP as soon as possible so we know how many people to, to purchase food for. So the address of the Friendship Center is 1119 North Newburgh Road. You can RSVP at mayor at cityofwestland.com, or you can call my office at 734-467-3200. The doors open at 1130, the program at 12 p.m. with lunch immediately following. Uh, we have my speech with maybe a couple short videos in there. It should be about 35 to 40 minutes, so I won't ramble on too much. Uh, we are going to have three special award presentations, which will, be, which will also be a part of those 40 minutes. We're giving the Circle of Excellence Award to a much-deserving city clerk, Richard LeBlanc, who served in darn near every branch of government uh, uh, available. Uh, we're giving a Legacy of Leadership Award to former Mayor William R. Wilde, who is our longest-serving mayor. And we're giving a Lifetime Achievement Award to our Director of Senior Resources, Barbara Shamel Markham. To answer the question to the young lady that asked about um, you know, bidding and, and do we evaluate, to eva evaluate those bids, I kind of smiled at Craig Brown because him and I met uh, probably a month ago. He showed me a humongous spreadsheet of about 20 plus vendors that he was evaluating for our phone system. At least 20 different categories maybe on what he was evaluating. So he, my staff does go through and evaluate everything thoroughly. Not maybe as thorough as Craig does, but uh, it was very, very thorough, and I was very impressed. I actually brought it here for almost like show and tell. If someone was going to ask about it, I couldn't wait to show it, and nobody asked, so I didn't show it. Um, but we do thoroughly evaluate all the bids and the vendors we work with, um, and I challenge my entire staff to, be, to find any efficiencies within our government to, uh, to work with the, for the city. As far as the Michigan Municipal League, um, we'll work with whoever wants to attend. We already have our reservations booked. My office will be there with a few staff members. We're going to be there to uh, pitch our project, which, as was stated, is the Mission to Mars an all-inclusive barrier-free playground in Tatton Park. Uh, we did have some swag. I ran out to grab it to, to show the folks at home and some of the folks in the audience. We bought some drawstring bags, uh, a water bottle with the logo on here, and then we got a stress ball, which I couldn't find, unfortunately. Um, Sinclair Recreation split the cost with us for that, so we're excited about that. Um, it's a voting process, right? Um, well, obviously, you want to whip up as much support as you can get, so I'm going to pitch the project on stage. We'll play a short video. Uh, we'll pitch the project and we'll try to talk to folks as they come by our vendor table to let them know about the, the, the project. I'm probably being biased, but I think it's the number one project out of the four. Um, there's four other, three other communities that are up against us and ours is by far the best. So we just really got to get the vote out, get the word out to get people to vote for it. <clears throat> got some great news. Uh, my office received word that we've been awarded the fiscal year 25 safety program from MDOT for pedestrian countdown pad signals at 42 different intersections in our city. The grant award is $200,000. Uh, while the project was, was planned for 2025, we were able to pull this program into 2024. So, um, Council, if you drive by the intersection of Newburgh and Marquette, you'll also notice a marked improvement as we had our 
cruise paint the ladder crossing or piano stripes as we want to call it for better visibility of that crosswalk. Originally we were told by MDOT that we couldn't move forward uh, but when we first proposed those, proposed those additions but we were finally given permission to do so and uh, we did that this last week. So DPS also updated the original school crossing sign uh, to add the word ahead. So now we have the fluorescent sign with the, with the kids crossing and it says ahead. And we continue to have a heavy police presence out there as well for the safety of those that use that crosswalk during peak times. More great news, the City of Westland Fire Department has been awarding a staffing for adequate fire and safety emergency response grant uh, through FEMA, or SAFER as they call it, in the amount of $5,709,867. This grant will allow the hiring of 15 firefighters for a period of three years. And unlike years past, this grant actually, uh, grant award requires no city match. So it's a huge, huge win for, uh, for our city. And only a small percentage of the thousands of departments that apply are awarded SAFER grants. Public safety is a top priority for me and I know uh, everybody on council, so we are very fortunate to be awarded with this very competitive grant. <clears throat> the Westland Fire Department recently hired six new firefighters, which brought them to the 2023-24 budgeted staffing level. And recruitment for new firefighters will begin immediately. The addition of these 15 new firefighters comes after a comprehensive evaluation of the city's emergency response needs and a consultation with fire department officials. Um, I do want to express my deepest gratitude to Senator Stabenow and Senator Peters for their diligence in securing these funds for Westland. Last two things, uh, as many of you may or may not know, we have met with Namdar Realty, the owners of the Westland Shopping Center on many occasions in 2023. Uh, they recently hired an individual who's been tasked with 30 of their properties that they've been prioritized for redevelopment or distressed properties, Westlands being one of them. Uh, we've been working closely with the redevelopment team to provide leads of potential developers that would be well suited to take on the project and <clears throat> that we have met with, I'm sorry, let me start that part over here. We've been working closely with the redevelopment team to provide leads of potential developers that would be well suited to take on the project and that we have met with and who expressed interest in the past. Based on that list of leads, a developer with a history of undertaking successful mall redevelopment projects began talks with Namdar to negotiate a deal, purchase agreement. In July, we met with the interested party once again who noted the city's proposed investment at the annex at Nankin, which is going at the former uh, service merchandise site, as a major driver in his interest. Our next meeting with the developer is scheduled for October 13th, so we're hoping to have really, really good news that uh, this developer purchases the property and we can move forward with uh, a great project at the Westland Shopping Center. Lastly, I just want to recognize or re remind folks to attend the Westland Board Member Fair and Recognition Day. I think the gentleman left that talked about all the comments on Facebook. I hope he invites all those people because I love to see people interact and, and get involved in our city. I see many board members in our audience as we, as we, as we sit here. Um, those board members that show up or, or folks that are interested, they'll receive deserved recognition for their dedicated board service if they currently meet on a board. They'll meet city liaisons and board members if they're interested in any boards. They can visit various information booths, get help with the board member application and also network with community members. So that event again is our Westland board member fair and recognition day. It's gonna be on October 12th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. We start a little early for folks um, that maybe could, that could get there early and we're going until 7 p.m. It's gonna be right here at City Hall. There will be light refreshments served and like I said, my staff will be here. I'll be here on hand to answer any questions about if anybody wants to get involved in our city. So that's all I got tonight. Thank you, Mayor. I will now move on to comments from the city attorney. To the chair, nothing from the city attorney's office tonight. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Comments from council members. We will start this evening with council member Godbow. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, first, I wanted to uh, congratulate Mo Ayub on his. Uh, uh, being uh, awarded the uh, Leadership Detroit class for, the, for this upcoming year. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of great directors, a lot of young directors in this city, and, and here's an, an example of one of them uh, that's uh, continuing to, to excel. He's been a uh, uh, president of the Michigan Association of Planners and now he's uh, taking part in this leadership class uh, uh, that's put on, I think it's through SEMCOG or, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, I just wanted to congratulate uh, Mo on that. It's a, uh, uh, he does a great job as do uh, a lot of our, our directors uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it doesn't go unnoticed, you know, we've got, 
you know, and I get out to a lot of other communities throughout the state, and we have a, uh, and unfortunately Dan's already left, but we have a, a, a number of young professionals as far as directors go that do, a, do an outstanding job. And uh, uh, a lot of cities are uh, very jealous of our, our younger talent that we have. Uh, and it's, it, but we have also have a good mix, right? We've got some seasoned uh, directors to help coach and mentor these, uh, the younger directors. And, uh, you know, Craig, Craig Brown's another one. We've got uh, uh, Devin Adams, uh, uh, Aubrey. Uh, so a lot of other communities are, are, are hurting for uh, recruiting young talent. And hopefully we can... Uh, keep our directors out of all the politics and just let them do their jobs. So uh, I want to thank my colleagues on the uh, fi final nomination for the MML delegate. Uh, again, it's, it becomes pretty obvious that it's just politics involved and not uh, what's... Anyway, I'll get, I'll get past that. A couple of weeks ago, we had a study session on multiple topics, and unfortunately, the minutes didn't reflect some of the things that were follow-up items or uh, uh, things that need to get addressed. But one of the one of the study sessions was on our marijuana ordinance, and I forwarded and and the fact that I've been requesting for quite some time that we sit down and revisit our ordinance because it's outdated and it needs revision. But uh, we haven't had any success in moving that forward or having any meaningful discussions on that. Uh, but we're past time for doing that, uh, particularly on the marijuana ordinance. Uh, I forwarded a, an email that I received from the person that was awarded the micro-business application. And the state has changed the rules for a micro-business and reclassified it. And unless we change our ordinance like we should, they can't get their license that we've already approved for them to get. So to the chair, I'd like to know when as soon as possible because you know, they, they like to get their business going. And we've approved it for the one license. We need to change our ordinance in order to allow them to continue the process. And we just can't continue to delay things. We sit here week after week for years now and do nothing. And it's, it's extremely frustrating. And now it's affecting our ability to get the businesses up and running. So uh, I'd like to know how quick we can get a study session scheduled so that the city attorney can prevent a, present us with the options, minimally on this section of the ordinance, but I think we have to have a deeper discussion on the ordinance it itself and uh, move this forward. We've sat on this for far too long. I'm writing it down. I'm not ignoring you. Okay. Um, would you like me to respond to you, or would you like it, me uh, to wait to my comments? Yeah, you can wait to your comments. Okay. So, uh, that's all I have this evening. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. All right. Well, we'll just continue down the line to Councilwoman Sampy. Good job on the meeting. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, thank you to my colleagues for your support to MML as uh, alternate delegate and congratulations, Councilman Godbout, on your appointment. I do look forward to attending. Um, and also thank you to my colleagues as well for approving the National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Like I mentioned, it's very important. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to choke up. Um, probably one of the most significant members of STEP actually lost. Whew. I'm sorry. Um, lost his battle with cancer on September 23rd. And um, Edward, Clayton, Christopher, 
Nicholson of Wasan. Um, the Nicholson family actually is a family friend of ours as well. My brother went to Berger with Edward, so this is, this is I'm sorry, this is very hard for me, but I, I cannot, I can't imagine what his family's going through. He didn't understand he had cancer, but he had the biggest smile. His heart was bigger than anyone would ever know. And for someone that had a disability, it's just wrong. It's absolutely wrong that cancer took him. And his dad is so strong. And I'm so sorry. I'm trying to get myself together. Um, so his dad would ask him, how are you doing today? And his response was, dad, I feel good. I feel good. And deep down, we all knew it wasn't true. And one of my most cherished memories with Edward was doing an autism awareness show that he would text me every day. And he would say, own it, Melissa, own it. What am I wearing? Like, let's go to Kohl's. What should I wear? And for someone that is so kind, I just hope that we can just be like him. Um, there's so much bad in this world. There's so much negativity. There's so much hate. There's so much divide. There's so much political BS. I just wish that people would just be kind like him. I just really wish that we would see him out in the community again because his light was just so powerful. And he really reminded us how simple life can be. So I just wanted to share my deepest condolences to the Nicholson family and just let him know that Wesleyan's thinking about him and we appreciate his contribution here to Wesleyan. I really hope that as a city we can honor him because again, he has been around in the city his whole entire life. My family just visited the Nicholson family and dropped off a bench for his memory and I know Don Nicholson is not doing well. So if you know him, please just let him know that you're thinking of him and, and give him you know, your hugs and prayers. Now let's all take a deep breath. And I'm so sorry I lost it. It's just, it's difficult when you lose somebody so powerful and someone with just so much light in the community. Um, on Saturday, I was honored to join my colleagues at the Wesleyan Police Community Partnership. Um, there was a fantastic party and the Wesleyan Community Partnership works to support the community in many ways. Um, there was nearly 400 people there. I know a few of my colleagues joined um, as well. They do a lot of community events, such as child safety education and great programs for our citizens. So um, I wanna thank Sergeant Capodra and Officer Margie Kelly for all your hard work on Saturday's event and all your efforts, because again, it was, it was very well attended and very well received. Um, on I'm sorry, Wednesday, October 4th, um, the mayor, like he stated, is doing a State of the City address. And I'm really looking forward to, um, to hearing what the future looks like for Westland. I did have some sneak peeks at the topics and I know the mayor has been working really hard. Um, and the residents, it sounds like, has more opportunity for, um, for RSVPing if you wanna contact the mayor's office. I wanted to also plug a few things that um, folks have reached out to me, um, others that they haven't, but I wanted to plug as well. Uh, the Wesleyan Historic Village Park is, is doing a haunted yard sale on October 7th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Perrinville High School on Cowan Road. So it looks like you're looking for updating your Halloween decorations and they're gonna have a lot of vendors and fall decor, so if you wanna join them, again, that's October 7th. Um, the fire station is gonna be doing a great event, Fire Station One. Um, the Wesleyan Firefighters is gonna do a fire prevention awareness lunch. So that's on Saturday, October 14th from 11 to two. And then um, the Norway Community Citizens Council, I, I saw this and I wanted to promote it. So that's Saturday, October 14th from 11 to two. And I know last year you guys had a great event and I hope that everything's successful. I'm gonna to try to stop by. It's like divide and conquer on the 14th. It looks like it's gonna be a busy day. 
Um, and then we will have, I don't, I was surprised Mayor didn't have, uh, mention this, but we have our trunk or treat coming up too. So Wednesday, October 25th, 5.30 to 7.30, it's gonna be in the district court parking lot on Ford Road. Um, hopefully there's opportunities for vehicles as well too. Hopefully that was a question I had, but I can reach out to administration. But trunk or treats are great for all kids alike. It's fr like I said, 5.30 to 7.30. Um, and it, attendees age 12 and under are encouraged to dress up. So our next meeting, just to wrap up, and again, I'm so sorry I lost it, kind of got emotional thinking about Step and um, Edward, but our next meeting is gonna be on Monday, October 16th at 7 p.m. Um, any resident that would like to reach out to me um, on Facebook, I'm Councilwoman Melissa Sampi, that's my personal page. Until then, be kind and safe with each other. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you, Councilwoman. Now we'll move on to Councilmember Herzberg. Thank you, Council President. Uh, my condolences also go out to the Nicholson family. Uh, that was a shock to me. I didn't even know uh, anything was going on. But we, Council had just got the message that uh, his son had passed away. So I think we were all shocked with the news. So my condolences to uh, Don Nicholson and his entire family. You know, I've been on this council for eight years now and the amount of dysfunctional things going on just has come, it's, it's blown up out of proportion now and tonight was a prime example. I think both of the candidates who wanted to go to the MML should have maybe talked to everybody to see if they had four votes, being that only six of us are here. Um, I still stand by my decision. Um, I have no issue with Councilwoman Sampi going as the alternate. I voted no because I think, uh, well, just because of the way things went down, there was some back and forth with the audience. There was back and forth with the audience at one of our study sessions. I just couldn't give my uh, vote in support of that. And I do think you should attend a convention before asking to be the voting delegate uh, to go to that. So, you know, there's a lot of things that should have been coming up on our agenda the last two meetings that didn't. Um, and it's all because of the election and because of politics and because of who's supporting who for mayor. And the amount of dysfunction that's going on here is really an embarrassment. And I've, I've never seen it so bad in my eight years here. So that's it for me. I got to stop before I get myself in trouble. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for stopping yourself. <laughs> Um, okay, moving on, we'll, we'll go to Council Member Hornbuckle. Uh, thank you, I appreciate it. <clears throat> so I want to start off by getting something off my chest. You know, I, uh, like you say, you want to be quiet before you get in trouble. Well, uh, um, I put myself in trouble. Um, so I want to start off by saying during the last City Council meeting, September 18, I had an opportunity to deliver my closing statements. However, uh, I must acknowledge that I made an unfortunate choice of words during that moment. And I wanted to make it clear to everyone in the city, I do not in any way find aspects of shooting incidents hilarious. Uh, I, want, I would like to stress that I am a deeply committed individual who genuinely cares about the well-being of our community. I will, um, <clears throat> sorry. While I am strong, passionate about the city, it's evidence that public speaking is an area where uh, I still need room to grow. Uh, it creates anxiety for me, and um, I see it as a very, a very good opportunity um, for improvement um, to continue my career. <clears throat> Sorry. I come to realize that Evelyn, that I had made a mistake, and later it was also pointed out. I want to take a moment to apologize to everyone who I offended in my previous statement. Uh, what I was trying to converse is that after engaging with residents at Holiday Park following the incident, they expressed that they did not feel unsafe. It's important to understand that that was an isolated incident and that it was being handled by our dedicated police force. The more pressing concerns that our community face on a regular basis is related to speeding cars and frequent traffic violations. I fully acknowledge that my choice of words were entirely wrong, and I take full responsibility for that. Full responsibility. Westland is not just a place I live, it's my community. And I take pride in working towards making it a better place for all residents. 
Thank you for understanding, and I am committed to continue my efforts in improving um, our beloved Westland. So to the mayor, city council, people in the audience, and people at home, thank you for the continued support. I truly appreciate it. Now that I got that off my chest, uh, I would like to move to the next thing. Over the weekend, I read a book and it, uh, a quote. I won't go over the whole quote, but I would like to share a quote with you. Uh, it says, if you want to smile, give a smile. And just let that sink in for a minute before I move on. One way to give a smile is by help delivering meals to seniors. Meals on Wheels is, is short 200 drivers in Wayne County. In the Westland area, they deliver 1,700 meals weekly to our seniors. The good news is uh, they have great, op uh, great volunteering opportunities uh, where you can deliver meals to our seniors. It, it, it doesn't take the entire day. It takes about an hour for a route, and they'll reverse part of your gas. If you're ready to, uh, to lend a hand or know someone who could use a hand-delivered meal, check out waynecounty.com forward slash SVS. And if you prefer to reach out by phone, you can call 734-326-5341 to volunteer. But if you're someone that needs a meal or extra smile, call 734-326-5202. And if that doesn't work, you can also reach me, uh, and I'll provide that afterwards. But, um, so let's keep our seniors smiling. Next, I want to talk about the DIA. Um, I noticed when I was checking the DIA, I noticed a couple of core members' uh, term expiring pretty soon. Um, and I want to kind of make a recommendation that the council and the mayor look at reappointing those core people. I believe the DIA uh, has some long, sorry. DEI. Oh, I'm sorry, DEI. -E I'm looking at it, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. So DEI, I'm going to just look at the word. <laughs> Uh, I think the DEI, D -E sorry, <laughs> uh, made some progress internally, and uh, I believe having that core uh, people to keep carrying on for their mission and plan um, is very critical for our city. Uh, I also want to invite everyone here, city council, mayor, to join me on November 13th at their meeting that starts at 5.30 to see the progress they made internally and hear some of the ideas uh, that they're putting up, uh, put to the table. Uh, also, I wanna uh, congratulate or give an applause to DPS for getting those speed humps out. Uh, as I've been out knocking doors, uh, a lot of residents say, hey, we, we definitely love those speed humps. We're glad that they're there. But then also I read, uh, talk to some residents and they say, hey, what about my neighborhood? Uh, yep. So um, I want to make sure that the, uh, the residents know I heard that. I will work to try to make sure your neighborhood get those speed humps as well. Uh, I also want to uh, echo what uh, Gabal said about other cities. I had the uh, privilege of going to other uh, city council meetings, other city town halls, and one of the things that I hear over and over time is we want to be like Westland. We want to have these things like Westland. Um, so. Uh, I would like to say that Westland, we're doing something right. It may not be perfect, uh, but we're doing something right and people are taking notice. Also, uh, <clears throat> if you have, if you, you can reach me at 734-224-2747. You can call or text me anytime, any questions, any concerns, and I'll do what I can to help you. Uh, and you can follow me on Facebook at uh, Councilman Delano Hornbuckle. Uh, for more motivational and pick-me-up messages every day and things around the city. Nothing negative. It's all from the heart. So thank you, and I appreciate uh, everyone here. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, now we'll move on to Council Member McDermott. Thank you. Well, thank you, Council President Pro Tem, and thank you for running and chairing the meeting tonight. You've done an outstanding job. I know that we made it a little difficult on you, so thank you for uh, playing along with all of us and running the meeting. So fantastic job, and thank you. Um, as was mentioned, and the mayor handed me a note, and I want to just make reference to what the mayor mentioned. Um, Don and Gil Nicholson lost um, their son, Edward Nicholson. And if you were ever at a city event, whether it was Blues, Brews, and Barbecue, um, whether it was one of the civic days that we did out at Corrado Park, uh, whether it was one of the car shows that Don put on, you always saw Edward there with a smile on his face. And if anyone had a right to complain, 
If anyone had a right to feel bad or be negative, it was Edward Nicholson, and he never, ever was. And he was always such a, a positive spirit for our community and, and such a light. So uh, my thoughts, my prayers, my condolences certainly go out to Don and Gail and the entire Nicholson family. And as the mayor uh, mentioned, or handed to me to, to mention, we are having a celebration of life here at City Hall. It's going to be on October 20th from 3 to 8 p.m. here at Westland City Hall for Edward Nicholson. So thank you, Mayor, for um, mentioning that. And uh, if you can come here, it's again on October 20th from 3 to 8 p.m. up here at City Hall to honor the memory and the legacy of Edward Nicholson. And I know without a doubt it was clearly evident from Councilwoman Sampy's comments that he's you know, touched her family and, and so many here in the community. So again, my thoughts and condolences go out to Don Gale and the entire Nicholson family. And thank you, Mayor, for putting that celebration of life on. It's, it's very important. I also wanted to thank the Mayor and the administration for um, a survey you may have gotten in the mail the other day regarding DTE and hopefully some accountability uh, regarding DTE. The survey states basically two questions. You can either go online and answer it or you can fill out the survey. What kind of power outages are you having? How prolonged are they? And what's the cause of the outage in your neighborhood? Um, for a lot of us, it's tree branches that are getting knocked over on the lines because we don't have buried power lines here in the city. But I think it's high time that we have take some action against DTE. It's something I've been uh, you know, squawking about for quite some time here. Um, I would, of course, like to see us go further and, and start advocating for things like a public utility. But I'm glad that we're really having this conversation around DTE accountability. So thank you for that. I was pleased to see that we got the SAFER grant awarded here in the city. A um, couple of notes on that. This is really going to be the first time, I think, with the SAFER grant that we are not just trying to make up for a deficit in staffing. I think too often we've relied on the SAFER grant to try and catch us back up because we have fallen behind and not done a good enough job to have a proactive plan in place to make sure that our fire department is well staffed. So this is actually going to be an in addition to not filling a void or filling a deficit. So I'm really excited at this $5 million grant. Uh, thank you to the chief, the administration, all the work that was done to, to get this grant. Thank you to the union, who I know was a big part of this as well, Local 1279. So thank you. I'm, I'm super excited that we have this. And we owe it to you, the residents and the people in the community, to have a long-term plan in place to make sure that we can get these uh, men and women not just on a temporary safer grant, but actually permanent full-time employees of the city of Westland. I want to thank Councilman Godbout for stepping up to be the MML delegate, Councilwoman Sampy for being the alternate delegate. I know it went back and forth here tonight, but uh, glad we were able to get that taken care of at the meeting as well. I want to thank uh, our community police officer, Officer Margie Kelly, and Officer Jeff Capodra of the Westland Police Department. Um, I had the chance to attend the um, Blue Smoke uh, Westland Police Community Partnership Fundraiser. Uh, it was a tremendous event. It was very well attended, as my colleague said, over 400 people there. Um, it was uh, you know, really nice to see everybody come out and support uh, that event. So thank you to Officer Capodra and Officer Kelly for putting on that event. And uh, this was the inaugural Blue Smoke event that kind of transition to replace the TRU event, as uh, our city clerk mentioned to me earlier before the meeting. So thank you to everybody that came out in support of that as well. Uh, I had the chance to attend a really terrific cultural event, the Native American Heritage Festival out at Heinz Park. That was um, a couple of weekends ago. It's a really exciting event to honor Native and Indigenous peoples and their contributions and continued contributions, not only here in the city of Westland, but across Southeast Michigan and across Metro Detroit. Um, I really hope that we can build on that and adopt a Indigenous Peoples Day resolution to honor Native people on the second Monday of October. It is a federal holiday, Indigenous Peoples Day. And it's what you typically think of as Columbus Day, but I think we need to go a step further and honor the sacrifices and the contributions of Native and Indigenous people and also acknowledge what we did to them, the plight um, and the pillaging that unfortunately took place of Native and Indigenous people. So I think it's important that uh, it's already a federal holiday on the second Monday in October, and I think we can go a step further to not only honor Columbus Day, but also honor Indigenous Peoples Day um, as well. I've got a lot here, so stick with me. Um, I do agree with my colleague. Uh, we had talked about this prior to the meeting tonight about the marijuana ordinance. Um, there has been a change in state law that we're going to have to have our ordinance fit and adopt to in order for that micro business to be able to open up. And I think that we need to have further discussion on the ordinance itself 
to look at potentially whether or not we want to have more retail licenses in the city of Westland, given that we have one of our retail licenses that we issued north of Ford Road that has uh, not been developing and has been delayed. And we have the one that you see out here on Ford Road, the Live uh, Cannabis, who is developing. So I think that definitely warrants further discussion, and it's uh, something I would like to see as well. We had some questions, and we've had questions in the past regarding the bidding process here in the city of Westland. Thank you for bringing those questions up, um, Ms. Bauman and, and folks who've brought it up in the past. Uh, my colleague, Councilwoman Rakowski, and I have been working, and I think we have you know, pretty good consensus here on the council on doing what's called a responsible contractor ordinance. Uh, what that will do is make the bidding process more open, more transparent. It will take away a lot of the subjectivity and will provide a potential like bidding scoring sheet so that you all as residents know when we bid out uh, your tax dollars for, um, when we send them out to bid for a contract, you have more transparency, more accountability, more objective scoring as far as why we're going with a vendor, not just looking at the lowest bidder, looking at the right bidder who pays their employees a living wage, who doesn't have any workplace safety violations, who has a good track record of doing good workmanship on a job as well. So adopting that responsible contractor ordinance, I think, will help us along in the bidding process to create a more open and transparent process, and I would certainly like to uh, see that as well. I want to thank Director Barra. I know he left. Uh, thank Council President Pro Tem Murkowski, Council President Hart. I know each and every year they work really hard with a team of people on the uh, Veterans Thanksgiving Day meals. Um, if you can donate, please go to cityofwestland.com. Uh, fill out the form to give anything that you can, even if it's just a couple of bucks. It's a really expensive undertaking. Um, you know, when you're buying, you know, turkeys and full meals, Thanksgiving meals for over 392 um, veterans and their families, and with inflation now, it's a really expensive undertaking. So thank you to Vic, thank you to Council President Pro Tem Murkowski. If you can give, if you can support it, uh, make a donation online, and if you know a veteran who's in need of a meal, you can also find the information there as well as uh, Director Barra had mentioned earlier. Um, I want to uh, thank Ray for, you know, always advocating for people with different abilities and disabilities. And again, thank my colleague, Councilwoman Sampi, for bringing up that really important resolution. So thank you for bringing that to the table. Thank you, Ray, for always advocating. Um, you know, acknowledging disabilities awareness is, is crucially important and uh, making sure that we treat people with equity, equality, and respect here in our community, as Ray always says, respect is the key word, um, is, is really uh, important. I'm glad to see that we're having a healthy conversation with Namdar Realty Group. I think we have to have an honest conversation about who Namdar is and what their business model is. So anything that we can do to move the mall in a new and different direction, uh, at least the part of the mall that they own, uh, I think is really productive and uh, positive. Um, excited for the grant that we got from MDOT. That's great to hear as well for, um, for pedestrian safety. And then just uh, two more things. Um, I want to spe send a special shout out to our DPW director, Ramsey El Garib. Um, I'm out there knocking doors quite a bit. So when I knock doors, I get a lot of ordinance issues, ordinance complaints, and a lot of neighborhood service issues. Hey, I'd like to have my sidewalk replaced. Hey, there's a crack in my street. Hey, we want to have a tree removed. I send Ramsey a ton of emails, probably, you know, at least an email a week, sometimes two or three. So uh, he's always super responsive. Always does a great job following up, uh, not only with me, but you know, with the residents as well. So I just want to thank Director El Garib because I know I bombard his inbox with a lot of emails from when I'm out knocking doors. And then, as always, yes, as always, if you need anything from me, I'm available on Facebook at Councilman Mike McDermott or on my personal cell phone number at 734-890-2146. Uh, hope you all have a great week. Hope we can get moving on some of these study session items that we've been talking and talking and talking about. And uh, hope that you have the opportunity, if you want to vote beforehand, to vote with an absentee ballot and exercise your right to vote because democracy is not and will not survive as a spectator sport. It requires your active participation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Well, I would like to start out with my comments with thanking Councilman Gadbout for leading us in the pledge. I'd like to thank my colleagues for bearing with me in a very interesting and, and different meeting for me to chair. Um, I apologize for uh, 
you know, not being um, as familiar with the nomination process as I would care to be. And I also appreciate your flexibility in allowing me to suspend the rules so that we could get through this process and make sure that we're represented at MML. Um, as the chair, I felt it was, um, it, it falls on me to break a tie. Uh, I think either one of uh, the council members would do a fantastic job. I'm gonna lean on um, the experience Please go, please learn, please become part of that process um, and enjoy it. And it's supposed to be in a very fabulous area, but so lucky duckies to you too. Uh, <laughs> um, to Ms. Bauman, um, it was purely an oversight. And I, um, if you're willing to remind me with an email, I'll forward those to the admin. Um, so you can get those questions. Generally though, so that you, just that little education portion, if something's on our consent calendar, uh, discussion doesn't really happen unless we move it off. So it would take a council member to move it off and to have discussion on that. But um, certainly we can get some more information sent to you. Um, let's see, what else? I think everybody's basically covered everything. I do wanna extend my condolences as well to the Nicholson family. Um, <laughs> nope, nope. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's been an evening, hasn't it? Uh, Edward loved Batman. He just loved Batman. And so I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to see that logo and think of it the same. Uh, I think it's, he's our Batman. He, he was, um, if, you, if you're a comic book guy or gal, sometimes it's, uh, he wasn't the hero we wanted, he was the hero we needed. And that's, uh, that's taken it to the Dark Knight side of Batman, but, uh, <laughs> but, but um, in honor of, of Edward, I, I welcome you all to be here the same bat time in the same bat channel in two weeks. And with that, can I have a motion for adjourn?